April of 1789 was an extremely important month in history, both in Europe and in America, because that was the month that riots broke out here in Paris. Riots that signaled the start of a long and bloody conflict known as the French Revolution. April of 1789 was also the month that George Washington was inaugurated as the first President of the United States. And while the revolution that created the American nation had focused on winning independence from a distant mother country, the situation here in France was quite different because the French Revolution was not about colonies gaining independence. Instead, it focused on destroying an unfair class system and the rule of kings that had existed in France for over 800 years. Because of the class-based hatred that had developed in France over the centuries, the French Revolution was far more brutal and resulted in ten times as many deaths as the American Revolution. And even though the French Revolution lasted for ten years, it took many more decades before a successful democracy came into existence in France. Nevertheless, the revolution's effect were widespread and immediate, because monarchies all across Europe lost power, and as that happened, the lives of ordinary people began to greatly improve. There were three basic causes of the French Revolution, and the first was the worsening financial condition of the government that resulted in a desperate need for more money. The reason France was nearly broke was because it had spent huge sums on soldiers and weapons to fight a conflict called the Seven Years' War. The North American branch of this European war is called the French and Indian War, and it was because of this struggle that France was forced to give up its vast and valuable territory, called New France, to Spain and Great Britain. This enormous loss included not only a huge part of Canada, but also such far-flung places as the city of New Orleans, in today's state of Louisiana, and big military and fur trading outposts such as Fort de Chartres in Illinois, Fort Condé in Alabama, and Fort Michilimackinac in Michigan. A huge financial drain was placed on the French government a second time a few years later when her troops returned to North America in 1778 to provide essential military support to the American colonists to help fight their common enemy, Great Britain, during the Revolutionary War. But France's financial crisis did not stem from military expenses alone because the king, his family, and many other members of the nobility were consuming unbelievable amounts of the country's wealth just to maintain their luxurious lifestyles and enormous palaces. As a result, by the late 1780s, the government of France, Europe's most populous nation, had borrowed so heavily it was almost bankrupt. But the king had decided spending could not be cut, and he wanted to increase taxes. This was a big problem due to the fact that for purposes of taxation, the 26 million citizens of France had been legally divided into groups called the Three Estates. The first estate was made up of the non-tax-paying clergy of the Catholic Church, France's largest landowner. The second estate was made up of the nobility the richest and most powerful citizens, whose birthrights exempted them from paying taxes and gave them many other special rights and privileges as well. The only taxpayers in France belonged to the third estate, made up of everyone who was not a member of the first two estates, including all of France's poorest citizens. And perhaps more than anything else, it was the tremendous unfairness of these tax laws that led to the outbreak of the French Revolution. However, besides the crisis over taxation, a second cause of the French Revolution was that the 1770s and 1780s were times of severe economic depression in France, when downturns in manufacturing and trade were coupled with many years of poor agricultural harvests. As a result at that time, 
most French incomes were shrinking, as serious shortages were driving up the price of basic foods. That was why by the year 1789, both lack of work and hunger were real problems across much of the French nation. In addition to the economic depression and the lack of government money that plagued France in the 1780s, a third important cause of the French Revolution were certain revolutionary new ideas that were coming out of a movement called the Enlightenment. These were many of the same ideas that had inspired the framers of the Constitution of the United States. The Enlightenment movement, also known as the Age of Reason, developed in Great Britain and France during the 17th and 18th centuries. This movement promoted the use of scientific reasoning as the best way to solve problems, as opposed to depending on faith alone. But the Enlightenment idea that inspired the leaders of the French Revolution the most was that ordinary people should be free to elect the leaders of their governments. This was a totally different idea from the commonly held belief in the divine right of kings. The notion that only members of certain families were fit to rule nations because God had specially chosen them to do so. Late in the spring of 1789, with tremendous pressure on it from all sides, the government of France seemed to be on the verge of total collapse. Government leaders decided to call a meeting of representatives of the three estates, namely the clergy, the nobles, and the ordinary people. It was to be presided over by the king, an event so rare that it had not occurred in France for 175 years. On May 5th, 1789, here at the enormous royal palace of Versailles that was home to King Louis XVI, hundreds of people arrived to attend the meeting. The common people brought with them lists of grievances or complaints that were presented to the king. But the king showed no sign that he was ready to make any changes, and the nobles decided they would block all attempts at reform. That was why the leaders of the Third Estate decided to form a new government, which they called the National Assembly. They invited nobles and clergy to join them as equals in governing the country. Few agreed, but one nobleman, the Marquis de Lafayette, a man who had served as a general in the American Revolutionary War, played an important role in setting up the National Assembly. In the end, the king and nobles lacked the power to stop the new government. Nevertheless, many of them secretly plotted to destroy it. As the National Assembly took over, a great fear seized the common people all over France. They believed the nobles were hiding large quantities of grain in order to starve them into obedience. And even though this was actually not true, a few of the magnificent palace homes or chateaus of the nobility were broken into and ransacked by angry crowds searching for food. And at that time, while the king still held some power, most people had come to believe that he had lost his ability to rule. On July 12, 1789, impassioned speeches were delivered in the streets of Paris, warning that the king was planning to wipe out the National Assembly and they demanded that strong action be taken to protect France's new government. In Paris on July 14, 1789, this congested traffic-filled square, called the Place de la Bastille, teemed with angry crowds of Parisians in search of ammunition and weapons. They had come here to take them from the great prison fortress called the Bastille, that once overlooked the square. Its high stone walls dominated this part of the city, and its dark dungeons held many unfortunate citizens. When one of the guards at the Bastille fired into the crowd, the outraged citizens smashed down the doors to the fortress, killed the governor of the prison, and began to tear the building apart stone by stone. Within two years, revolutionaries had used the stones to build this bridge, so, as they said, 
people could trample forever on the despised old fortress. Right after the Bastille fell, rioters marched here to the Hotel de Ville, the city hall of Paris, to search for more arms. Three days later, the king himself made an appearance here to kiss the new tricolored flag just adopted by the revolutionaries. Its red and blue colors were taken from the flag of Paris, and the Marquis de Lafayette had introduced the royal white between them. In the meantime, revolutionaries took over the city hall and formed a new city government, the Commune of Paris, to replace the royalist followers of the king, who had governed the city for so long. By the end of July, the events in Paris, coupled with uprisings in other communities across France, frightened the royalists enough that the Revolutionary National Assembly was able to continue on as the official government of France. Starting in August of 1789 up through September of 1791, the National Assembly made many important changes by passing new laws intended to solve some of the problems that had plagued the country for centuries. For example, the Assembly divided France into legislative districts, and although they limited the right to vote to wealthier citizens, elections were held for local government offices. The National Assembly abolished some of the unfair dues, dating back to medieval times, that poor peasants were required to pay the nobility. And it granted complete religious freedom to Jews and Protestants, two groups that had often been subjected to ruthless repression under the monarchy. In order to pay off the government's enormous debts, the National Assembly even seized property of the Roman Catholic Church, which owned about one-tenth of all the land in France. It closed certain monasteries, such as this one, and excess church property was sold for cash. The assembly started to make the Catholic Church and the nobility pay taxes, and they required that voters elect church officials as well as court judges. In September of 1791, the king accepted a new constitution for France, worked out by the assembly. Because it established certain basic freedoms, they subtitled it A Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. By then, most members of the National Assembly believed that the French Revolution was over, and so they disbanded to make way for a newly elected government called the Legislative Assembly. But as it turned out, the French Revolution was very far from over, and few of them could have imagined the desperate times that lay just ahead. True or false? In 1789, most European kings would have claimed that their right to rule came from God. True or false? The three estates were the three largest palaces of the French king. True or false? Many of the leaders of the Enlightenment tried to promote scientific thinking. True or false? The National Assembly was the government of France at the time of the storming of the Bastille. True or false? Before the French Revolution, nobles in France paid no taxes. <laughs> 